Perfect. Hello, this is Rick Saltarelli with Salty Breeze Cruise Planners with this week's segment of Beyond Your Front Door. And there is no doubt who we have with us today because that big red funnel says it all. I am so happy to have Seth Grunes back with me from Carnival Cruise Lines. Welcome back, Seth. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. I am so happy to have you back because one of the things I love to chat about is new ships. And you have a new ship. Your newest ship is the Mardi Gras. And I'd like you to take our followers through some of the new features on this gorgeous new ship. Sure, I'd love to. This is a ship that we've been all excited for. I'm gonna actually cover my camera real quick so you can see these backgrounds better. But Mardi Gras is gonna be 180,000 gross tons. And we just announced yesterday that she's coming to Port Canaveral on June 4th. So we're really excited that she's finally making her way to the US, finally making her way to Florida. And this ship is gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna show you a few things that I think are really awesome about this class of ship. Number one, it's gonna be powered by liquefied natural gas, which is gonna be great for our environment. And it's just gonna be the first ship that we have that is powered by this liquefied natural gas. But the ship is also gonna be divided into six themed zones, which is new for us. So there's gonna be zones and I'll take you through what those look like. This first one is our Grand Central. This is your main atrium. As you can see, it's a beautiful space. There's three story floor to ceiling windows with plenty of space for guests to enjoy. It's kind of like the gateway to the rest of the ship, to the restaurants, the bars, the shows. So there's gonna be a lot of different things happening here during the day and the evening. Uh, one of the other zones that we're really gonna enjoy and you might have some fun here too, is our Piazza. So this is uh, the Italian area. And I forgot to mention, but these, zones are inspired by the places that vacations can take us. So this is Italy. We were in Grand Central, which was like a big hustling, bustling city. So here's where we're going to have our 24 hour complimentary Pizzeria del Capitano. We also have a specialty restaurant here, which is our Cucina del Capitano. There's also going to be Rudy Seagrill and then some really beautiful murals. So this place is uh, designed to be like you're going through a courtyard in Italy. So great for some pictures. In the back, there's going to be a Vespa. So we know all of our social media fans are going to love to take their pictures there and post it with hashtags and all kinds of great things. Uh, one of our other zones is going to be Lido. So this is our main Lido pool, but this is kind of designed like, you know, your resort style vacation or maybe like the beach. Um, so this will be our pool. We have the Seaside Theater. Off to the back, you see the two-story Red Frog Tiki Bar, which is really cool. There's some hot tubs and plenty of place to catch sun or to relax in the shade. One of the next zones I'm really excited about is the French Quarter. So this obviously would be inspired by Louisiana. There's going to be jazz and bourbon, and this is our Brass Magnolia Bar. There's going to be some restaurants. We even have a partnership with Emeril Lagasse. So we have Emeril's Bistro. And there's going to be muffaletta, raw oyster bar, all kinds of great things there. And we even have a fortune teller bar where there's going to be all kinds of mystical drinks and handcrafted cocktails. The next space we have is our summer landing. So this is going to be in the very back of the ship. So as you can see, there's a pool. This is not exclusive. Any guest can enjoy this area. So there's an infinity style pool. There's a hot tub off to the side. There's some bars, lounges, and then above, you can see all these beautiful aft facing balconies. And on the corner, those are our new Excel class suites. So really great space for our guests to enjoy. And then the last zone I'll talk about today, which is the sixth zone, is our ultimate playground. So this is where our outdoor enthusiasts are gonna have a great time. You can see there's a miniature golf course. There's a water park with tons of twister slides and splash park. There's a <laughs> ropes course off to the side that you don't see. And then just plenty of activities that can take place outdoors. But one of the things you might be noticing here is this little track that goes around, and that is Bolt. This is our first ever, the industry's first ever roller coaster at sea. So this is going to be really cool, and our guests will love this. I think you'll love it. I'm going to love it. Um, and it goes about 45 miles per hour. It's powered by us, so we can control how fast it goes. And it's just going to be really cool. I can't wait to try it. Now, so a 45 mile an hour roller coaster on a ship that is going at about 20 knots per hour. So you're going to get a little extra wind there in your hair. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is awesome. And so this ship um, is a name that might be familiar 
to people that have been fans of Carnival for a long time. So let's go back almost 50 years ago. I believe it was the very first ship from Carnival was also called the Mardi Gras, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Our first ship in 1972 was called the Mardi Gras. And there's a funny story about that ship. You know, when we first went out on our maiden voyage, we were all excited to have our first cruise going out. It was um, an ocean liner that we converted to become the Mardi Gras and went out and hit a sandbar and we got stuck and we couldn't go anywhere. So we're like, oh no, what are we going to do? And they opened the bars, gave out drinks to everybody. And that's supposedly the story of how Carnival became known as the fun ships. So everyone have, had a great time. The water, the tide came back in and we were able to sail. So it's just something very memorable. And uh, one of the main things is when our late founder, Ted Arison, founded Carnival, he had a vision to make cruising affordable to everybody. He wanted to make cruising accessible to all people. And he obviously did a great job with that. So that original Mardi Gras was a game changer for the industry because it did make cruising accessible to more people. Well, that's the same thing that's going to happen with this new Mardi Gras. It's going to be a game changer because it's a new class. There's going to be so many things for our guests to enjoy, and it's just going to make cruising so special for many people. Sure. And just look at how many of those state rooms on that design are balcony state rooms, most people's most favorite accommodations. So we'll just go back to that same picture. Just take a look at all the balconies. I'll talk so you can see it here, but yeah, so many balconies and suites all along the side there. So really great. It's over like 20 new categories that we have on the ship. That is awesome. And then one of the things people might have noticed when they saw that picture is that this ship has a new hull design. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so this is the first ship that has the new hull design. You can see it there, the blue, the crisp red line. So this was inspired by our officers' uniforms. Um, so it's kind of paying an homage to our officers. And um, also it's the colors of the red, white, and blue, America. We consider ourselves America's cruise line. So we kind of wanted to bring that design element. It also matches the funnel. So it's just really something new, something updated. And we're actually going to be bringing this to more ships. So Carnival Magic, which will be sailing soon, is going to have this design. This is going to be the first ship that has this design um, after her dry dock. And then we're going to bring this to Carnival Glory and then many other ships to follow. So here's a shot of Carnival Magic. Sure. And that is an amazing and beautiful design for the ship. I love it. And so I'm glad you showed us a few pictures there about some of those areas, especially the courtyard, because it's hard to talk about cruising and not talk about food. It's one of the things that we love to tell people about. And Carnival has so many great choices for people. So do you have a favorite restaurant on board the ship? Yeah, you know, that's so hard to answer because there's so many different places I love to eat. Um, but I'll talk about some, and I'm actually kind of like a magician today. I'll be like Houdini and keep disappearing. So uh, the first one, I think one of my favorites is Blue Iguana Cantina. So I like the tacos. There's fish tacos, chicken. I think we have pulled pork as well. And it's just really easy, great for lunch. There's also burritos. You can do breakfast burritos. We have huevos rancheros. Uh, so it's really great, quick and easy. I love this. But one of the coolest things about Blue Iguana Cantina is there's a salsa bar. So if you like salsa, you can come make your own salsas and dips and things like that and just add that to your tacos or whatever you're eating. So I, I really like Blue Iguana Cantina. That is amazing. I also have some favorite restaurants. In fact, I like telling people that <clears throat> we like doing a dine around on Carnival because it makes it really, really easy to do. So uh, the last time we were sailing, I believe it was on the Vista or the Horizon, and we did a dine around. We started at the Seafood Shack and we had an appetizer. And then we went over to the Blue Iguana Cantina and had something else to eat. It was, so we were sharing. And then we went to the uh, Guy's uh, Pig and Anchor Barbecue and had a full plate of meat and beans and, and uh, all the accoutrements. And then we ended up at Cherry on Top for us having the Cold Stone ice cream experience. And so that's something you can do. That you know probably took us a couple of hours. But uh, you know, sometimes we think about dining around in our local markets, but you can do it on board a cruise ship. So <laughs> we really enjoyed having that experience. The other thing I like talking about when it comes to cruising, besides how beautiful the ships are and the food, is the itinerary. And one of the things that are really popular are outer islands. And Carnival owns several 
but there's something really special about Half Moon K. What can you tell us about it? Well, I'll show you. So here's Ted, Ted the donkey. So Ted is our new carnival mascot for Half Moon Key, which is our private island that's owned by Holland America, which is part of the Carnival Corporation. So this is uh, in the Eleuthera chain of islands in the Bahamas. So Half Moon Key is known for its crescent-shaped beach. Um, but Ted is a resident donkey that lives there. I don't think this is actual Ted, I'm not sure, but I don't think he snorkels either. <laughs> but um, he's our new carnival mascot for Half Moon Key. So that's you know a really great place. If you haven't been there, I'll show you some pictures of what that looks like. And um, you can see one of them pulling in, but beautiful crescent shaped beach, cl crystal clear water, white sand. It's just really special. This is one of those ports where we anchor out at sea or we tender. And then we have water shuttles that take you to shore just because the water is so shallow that our ships have no place to actually dock. Um, but I really love Half Moon Key. There's so many things to do. Here's what the beach looks like with all the lounge chairs. There's this kind of uh, shipwreck bar. There's these cabanas that can be rented that you can see down below that are very colorful. We do horseback riding. There's swimming with the stingrays, um, all kinds of nature things. You can ride your bike. And Carnival brings the food off the ship and it's a complimentary picnic, basically, the whole day that you're on this beautiful island. So um, one of the great things about Half Moon Key. And there is so much beach there and there's so many chairs that there really is a Shea Lounge for just about everybody. And uh, so there's another story about Ted the donkey. I believe that, um, you know, during the last year, a lot of people were wondering about Ted. And so I don't know whether they started a campaign or whether they were hashtagging on Facebook, but people were wondering if Ted was okay. And you're here to tell us that Ted is okay. That is okay. Ted is Ted's here. okay. <laughs> All right. And I want to move on to uh, the president of Carnival, a lady whose name is Christine Duffy. She's a remarkable leader, but she has been out more recently visiting the ships and visiting the staff, keeping them enthusiastic about cruising. What message do you uh, think she has been sharing with everybody other than that? <laughs> Well, we love Christine. She's a great leader. We're so happy that she's at the helm of our ships and our company. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure knowing Christine, her message is stay happy, stay positive. Our guests miss you. We miss you. We'll see you soon. We'll sell you soon. And she's just sharing positive and cheerful messages because that's who Christine is. Um, so she's been making sure they're okay, that their families are okay. So here you can see her when she visited the Sunshine for the first time. It was the first ship she was on in over uh, 14 months, I think. And so we call it Walking on Sunshine. This is when the ship was ported in Miami. So she's talking to our officers, the captain and our hotel um, HR director, I'm sorry. And then here's another great shot that we have of her visiting other crew members. Christina is known for visiting all the ships. When she walks on board, she says hello to every single person. It doesn't matter if they're cleaning the floors, working in the engine room. She goes around and she says hello to every single person. So we- well, That is really amazing. And I have met Christine several times. She has been at uh, Cruise Planners annual convention several times. And I've actually been on board with Christine. She is an amazing leader. She is a very huge fan of the travel agent community as is all of the leaders at Carnival. So we really appreciate our relationship with her and with Carnival Corporation itself. And so I do have a final question of the day. It's one I'd love to ask uh, other people in the cruise industry. And that is, what is the next cruise that you have booked and why? So that's another tough one because I want to go on every ship that I can. But we are celebrating our 50th birthday or anniversary next year in 2022. So it's a big occasion and we're going to have a huge celebration. And it's going to actually be introducing our new ship, Carnival Celebration, which will be a sister ship to Mardi Gras. So I'm planning to book this, I'm hoping, because uh, this ship sails on my birthday on March 5th. And what we're going to be doing is there's going to be celebration cruises where we're going to have a few a few ships meeting up at sea and doing all kinds of parties. There's going to be deck parties, all kinds of reminiscent things from cruising of the past, like our midnight buffet, throwback sea day. And it's just going to be fun when ships are actually going to be meeting up in the ocean or wherever they are in the sea. So that's going to be really something fun to see. I, I want to be part of that. Yeah, that sounds like an amazing experience. I do have a, a cruise booked with Carnival into 2022. But one of the things I do want to remind those who are listening to us is that uh, Carnival has more home ports in the United States than any other cruise line. 
So if you are looking to cruise in 2021 and beyond, there is a home port that is close to you. And you've seen these beautiful new ships. There are ships close to you that can get you out in that next exciting cruise and vacation. So if you are looking for a cruise, please think of giving us a call at Salty Breeze Cruise Planners. We help create lifelong lasting memories. And it starts with a call to us at 888-332-8202. Seth, I wanna thank you so much for being with me today. You were the very first guest I ever had on Beyond Your Front Door. And so I wanted to have you back to celebrate one year of our program. So thank you for sharing part of your morning with me. Well, and thank you, Rick, and congratulations on passing one year of Be On Your Door. And it's always great to work with you, and I really do appreciate your partnership, and it's always fun. Awesome. Have yourself a blessed week. Thanks. You too.